Good afternoon, John from uh, Saxo Bank. You're a VIX specialist. We see a very uh, strong dollar uh, last weeks. What's your prediction for the euro dollar? Yes, well, it's really interesting to see this uh, very strong dollar, clearly driven by the entire uh, cycle of uh, interest rates rising, the constant need to adjust uh, the Fed peak expectations for where the Fed rate is going to end ever higher as this Fed is clearly about fighting inflation, has been having to reinforce that message constantly with each appearance, with each meeting, it seems. And then finally, it seems the market is getting the message. As well, there's the concern about quantitative tightening, what that could do to longer term interest rates. So we think the dollar will, will likely peak and euro dollar potentially reach a bottom sometime in the coming months, uh, two to three months in, in our estimation, based on the, that peak cycle in, in uh, U.S. rates and based on sort of the maximum pessimism having been reached, even if we do face a very ugly winter ahead for Europe, that the, the sentiment and the outcomes for Europe will sort of be priced in uh, by in that sort of two to three month time frame for Europe. So somewhere, obviously, we're below parity. We think it could weaken further uh, towards 90 cents, maybe at times slightly below 90 cents. But that's an approximate forecast for where uh, euro versus the dollar uh, may bottom for the cycle, uh, at least for this uh, for this coming winter. Okay, and uh, in case inflation uh, will not uh, lower, go up again, maybe the Fed could raise the rate again. Would you expect uh, a stronger dollar again? Yeah, I mean, if we're not finished uh, quite soon with U.S. Uh, rate cycle, with yields continuing higher and higher and higher, I think that does continue to aggravate the risks of a rising dollar. But I think before that happens, we almost risk uh, with these yields spiking to where they spiked to. If they go much further, we, we see something giving way or something sort of breaking, if you will, in the financial system. And it just becomes too painful. So we think some sort of intervention to at least slow that rise or, 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 or break slow it down, uh, basically, relative to what we've seen at times in recent months. So uh, th that's sort of it becomes self-limiting at some point in our view, because there's only so much pain the financial markets can take before this becomes uh, too significant an issue and starts to cause systemic risks. OK, and Europe also the inflation is also sky high, of course. Um, maybe the ECB will also raise uh, the, the rates again. Would it uh, strong on uh, the euro again, you think? Well, it's been an important part of preventing the euro from being even weaker than it would be otherwise. The ECB finally very, very late coming on board and realizing the seriousness of the situation and realizing that if it doesn't get on board with the types of rate rises we're seeing elsewhere, for example, moving 75 basis points at its most recent meeting, that, that euro weakness becomes an additional risk for inflation. So they're taking the, taking the situation more seriously has helped to prevent what would have been an even weaker euro. We, we've seen what happens to the Japanese yen, for example, where the Bank of Japan insists on unchanged monetary policy. So the ECB is on board. They're serious. They are moving, and they're moving more quickly than they have been. Uh, but I think um, with the Fed peaking out, the ECB won't need to hike uh, as much as the Fed and can't hike as much as the Fed uh, does for this cycle because uh, you know if if four percent interest rates are a problem for 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 the U.S., they're you know basically catastrophic almost for uh, for the eurozone. So uh, uh, yes, the ECB is on board uh, and. Uh, we, we think they'll take the message as serious as they need to relative relative in relative terms to, to the Fed right here in, the, in this part of the cycle. Okay, lately we saw um, a big dip in sterling. Uh, what do you think are the causes for it? Well, sterling is, is really an interesting, uh, almost like a laboratory, an experiment for a policy response to what is a very, very ugly backdrop, a very supply side limited economy that's, that's driving worse inflation there. The same energy effects, uh, energy spike effects on the economy as we're seeing in Europe. And at the same time, very, very large external deficits. So where, where does the UK go for funding its, uh, its deficits in terms of trade, et cetera, to fund energy costs, et cetera? On top of that, you have the, the, uh, the government uh, subsidizing energy prices for the lower income uh, people to, to, to allow people to stay in their homes and stay heated for the winter. That goes to the public balance sheet. And on top of that, tax cuts, which will further erode the uh, sovereign balance sheet and make deficits even worse on the fiscal side for the UK. It's a cocktail that just doesn't add up for the currency. And, the, and, and UK rates at the longer end of the curve are running away to the upside because there's just not credibility on the fiscal side. Who wants to own this UK debt if, uh, if inflation levels are going to where they're going uh, domestically in the UK? So further risks for the pound, for sterling, until the Bank of England uh, you know, applies the bitter medicine of, of pretty vicious uh, rate hikes in all likelihood. OK, uh, now back to the euro. Uh, Europe, we see in Italy uh, some uh, big political movements. 
Uh, what's your view on the euro? Yeah, so it's uh, it was kind of a, a really quiet election. There was a lot of noise ahead of this election in Italy with the uh, with the election of. Uh, what appears to be a coming prime minister, George Maloney, of this Brothers of Italy party. Uh, that party is even outperforming the polls slightly, 25% of the popular vote, quite impressive. Suddenly, Italy's largest party. Now, some of her coalition partners on this, this right-leaning bloc slightly underperformed. So the popular mandate at 43% of the popular vote is not massive. However, this is a character, Maloney, who was promised to, to roll back some of the reforms that her predecessor, Mario Draghi, brought that were sort of seen uh, or deemed necessary to bring these pandemic relief funds, 200 billion to be specific, uh, 200 billion euros, uh, to Italy. If she's successful in rolling back those reforms, again, we get into this uh, awkward situation of tension, supposed risks of existential crisis. Uh, on, on terms of, of, of these funds being dispersed from the EU because Italy is very reliant on the generosity of the ECB to keep its bond yields orderly and on the EU budget to bring some more fiscal uh, Italy's way to deal with its uh, to deal with uh, support to its economy with these very uh, ugly times of high prices for energy, uh, etc. So I, it, it will create a t uh, tensions, but it seems to be the market is treating this with a as a slow burn issue and I, I generally agree with that assessment we, we need to see how this government finds its feet and see uh, what the behavior is like as the first uh, sort of problems start to rise and, and how, how these uh, how these two sides negotiate um what's your view on emerging markets yeah emerging markets have a very mixed bag uh, currency wise so uh, but broadly speaking you, you can you can look at the emerging market currencies and and, and say that they've performed remarkably well given where u.s yields have gone and given a very strong dollar traditionally as the dollar is the world's uh, funding currency, the global reserve currency of the world, when you have a strong dollar, that tends to provide tremendous pressure on emerging markets. We have seen that pressure in places uh, since the pandemic, but emerging markets, they know the drill. They know that when inflation goes up, you have to hike rates to prevent currency weakness, aggravating the situation. They've done so, they did so more aggressively there than in developed markets. So ironically, many of the more sort of stable uh, emerging market currencies, take a currency like the Mexican peso, for example, been quite stable because they have relatively uh, high or at least neutral real yields. In other words, the policy rate is appropriate or approximately matches inflation. Very unlike the U.S., where inflation is still far, far above the policy rate, or Europe, much less Europe or the U.K. Uh, other emerging market currencies taking the, the situation less seriously. Uh, Turkey is the real outlier here where they're simply, they're actually cutting rates despite inflation levels beyond anything we can imagine of 70% and even higher uh, in the country because the, the, the president is politically interfering and has this odd beliefs about what the drivers of inflation are. So it's a very mixed bag. Those emerging market currencies with a strong commodity portfolio, because that's been a big focus, have done relatively well. Brazilian real, for example, after a period of weakness, had a nice comeback. Um, uh, the South African rand is a little bit different because of its uh, financial instability, so it's, it's been a bit on the sort of more traditional weaker side. But uh, it's a very mixed bag across emerging markets. But very key is to have some sort of credibility on the interest rate and policy front, and not to have too large of a current account deficit, too reliant on foreign energy sources, uh, etc. That is a key. Uh, a key risk in this world of very high energy prices. Okay, finally, last question. Many uh, clients from Saxo Bank are uh, in Europe, for example, people from Holland. Mm. Um, if they fear the, the equity markets go down, for example, they can take out a lot of money uh, from the equity markets. Would you recommend it to put it in euros or would you recommend uh, investing it in, in a mix of uh, foreign currencies just to temporarily stall the money? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And uh, I think the dollar is strong. I think it can go a bit stronger, but I think we're sort of getting there in terms of, of peak dollar strength. So one needs to have maybe a, a hedge your bets, especially from an international perspective on, on your portfolio risks. But the great thing about foreign exchange is you don't need to, if you do quote unquote cash out of equities, foreign exchange, you can you can simply have a, it's a leveraged, you can attract, uh, view it as a leveraged product. So even if you need to have a million euros worth of exposure, you can get that exposure with, let's say, 200,000 euros because you can leverage that five to one because currencies don't move generally. Now, we've seen some exceptions to that with this cycle, especially starting, but they generally don't move by uh, 20 to 30 percent increments uh, you know, intra-month. So you can leverage your exposure just to 
free up cash flow or free up cash for, for other investments. So one needs to look at hedging that way in the foreign exchange space is something that can be done in, in a leveraged fashion. But I would say uh, if you have no exposure to uh, other, other currencies, why not keep them domestic, domestically given these prices, but, but some mix, uh, yes, of, of euros and dollars if, uh, if not. Do, finally, last question, almost the same question. Do people in, in Denmark also the same? If they move out of equities, they also park their money in euros, in dollars, and uh, uh, Danish krona? Well, Danish krona has been essentially locked to the German mark since back in the mid-80s, and, and since the age of the euro has been locked with a very tiny uh, range to the euro. So it is not really a floating currency. Uh, it's, it's unusual in that regard relative to the Swedish krona and the Norwegian krona, which are properly floating currencies and have, have weakened a great deal. So uh, the, the Danish investors uh, perspective is, is really not shouldn't be really be any different from that for any any country uh, in the euro uh, in the euro uh, the EMU. So the euro area that uses the euro as its currency. Okay, thanks for the interview. All right, thank you very much.